I got Jeff Pierce joining me from St. Louis, our senior manager of derivatives trading with some commentary from the sell side and analysts as well. But uh, let's talk some of the Boeing uh, knock on effect here first. Jeff, as Boeing shares this morning are higher, uh, but you know, it has expanded beyond just Boeing now, uh, in particular the airlines. By the way, Boeing's now only up uh, a little over two bucks. So it's um, gonna require a little bit more, I guess. United's down pretty sizably, four and a half percent. So FAA is gonna be keeping a close eye here. Uh, how related is this, Jeff? Is this just because they've got a bunch of Boeing planes or what? Uh, it certainly could uh, be playing a role. What we're seeing out of the FAA is really they're looking at uh, some of what United's been doing in terms of their processes. They said that the, some mm -hmm. of the recent safety events, they're going to increase oversight because of, and they're going to try to ensure that they're really complying with safety regulations, identifying those hazards out there, mitigating risk. Uh, they said they plan to evaluate you know, their processes, manuals, and the facilities in the coming weeks. They also uh, plan to pause a variety of certification activities for that period of time. Uh, they said certification activities that are already in process can continue, but future project projects may be delayed because of any issues they find with oversight. Reportedly, the FAA is also discussing the possibility of blocking uh, the airline from adding new routes or seating customers on their new aircraft. We know that the They've already suspended United's ability to allow pilots trained on one airplane to, uh, from flying on others. And some of this background here where this you know, appears to be coming from, certainly there's a lot of scrutiny out there because of been, what's been going on with Boeing. But United has also had some issues. The 737-800 aircraft was found to have a missing external panel uh, earlier in the month. The uh, 777 lost uh, a wheel taking off in San Francisco in, in, in March as well. Um, and the impact of Boeing, you know, certainly could be big. We know that they've, they've really planned to, to grow. They're, they're trying to add capacity about 30% by 2026. So this could have an impact on the airline. Okay. Yeah, it's important that, uh, you know, this is a United uh, specific um, in addition to, you know, Boeing. Obviously, the uh, planes uh, have been uh, Boeing planes that they've had issues with. Uh, but, uh, you know, all these airlines have to go through all the checks and go through all the precautions, obviously. And there have been a few of these incidents where, at least from kind of the layman's perspective and the, um, you know, uh, uninformed kind of average, you know, uh, perspective of someone watching, it's, it's hard sometimes to know, okay, was this a manufacturing problem or was this, a, you know, an airline problem where they should have, you know, checked something. A few of these incidents did kind of seem that way. So I guess it makes sense to go to the airline where the most incidents have happened and make sure they're all buttoned up as well. Wouldn't be fair yeah, to I just mean, crush Boeing. Absolutely. I think that's, as you're saying, it's clearly important to know. I think some of the advanced scrutiny maybe we're seeing is in part because of what's been happening with Boeing. But to your point, it's the airline's, uh, you know, the airline's responsibility to upkeep these planes. So if there's issues that are occurring because of upkeep, that's certainly something they're going to look specifically at the airline for. And having said that for United Airlines, we know that, um, you know, the suspension of some of those Boeing planes certainly is going to have an impact on, on this quarterly report. The company's already expect, said they expected adjusted loss between 35 and 85 cents for the first three months of the year. And, and, and that was in part because of some of the groundings of the Boeing planes. Okay. All right, uh, so United here, I think, is sort of the epicenter from the carrier standpoint of what's happening with Boeing, as uh, those uh, airlines with fewer uh, Boeing planes in the fleets have been outperforming. Now uh, United uh, going to kind of uh, get a second look on its own. So uh, we'll find out how uh, culpable they are. Uh, shares down about 4%. Jeff, uh, a couple notes out this morning. Uh, let's talk... Uh, Maybe uh, Intel and AMD first, though, before we get to the analyst commentary, is uh, our relationship with China in the semiconductor world remains a stressed one. And um, Intel's down, uh, hurting this morning, about 4%. Chip makers overall also lower by about 1% now. Oh, okay, we're going to get Jeff on the phone here. He's uh, just lost the contact there. But uh, SMH is down 1%. It's actually not a great morning for chips. NVIDIA's down about 80 bips as well. Intel share is one of the worst performers. Right now, trading below $41, down 4%. China's going to start phasing out some of Intel's chips. AMD, perhaps, as well. At least that came from a report by the Financial Times, citing people familiar with the matter, saying that the companies are going to be targeted by the Chinese restrictions. 
as it's been a tit for tat between the U.S. and China regulating each other's chips. And uh, that's obviously been a headwind to some extent here, uh, one of the few headwinds uh, considering how powerful the semiconductor trade has been behind NVIDIA. Something to keep an eye on as potentially a little bit of limited uh, sales uh, could hurt some of the growth around some of these chip makers if China's not going to let us ship them in. But Intel in particular, with 27% of its revenue from China, not going to do well, uh, depending on which chips are targeted. Details on that right now are a bit scant, but uh, certainly a pretty uh, big deal uh, if it indeed happens. Hey, Jeff Pierce, we got you on the phone. You've got me. Sorry about hey, that. There he is. Uh, did I miss anything there? Do we know the specifics of which uh, chips China's targeting right now, or is it just, just generally uh, FT saying that something's coming down the pipe? Yeah, it, it's more news that this is coming down the pipe, and this is not new, right? If we look at last week, we know that they were reporting looking at EV chips specifically that had kind of a, a more dominance on, think of NXP, on semi names like that. Today, uh, you know, uh, reports are coming out. They're tightening these, these restrictions on chips. Uh, you know, names like Intel and AMD both down this morning off of it. Um, China is a significant market for both of those companies. If you look at uh, Intel generated about 27 percent of their revenue over the last 12 months uh, coming out of China. AMD is their third largest market at about 15 percent of revenue. Um, but this is kind of an ongoing thing we've seen, right? We know chip controls. Uh, we look at Apple, them kind of, you know, pushing away from the Apple phone, banning banning that and, and for government employees. So this is not specifically aimed at one name, but a lot of the names are feeling it with kind of the exception of, of NVIDIA today down just about a half a percent. They look like investors are pretty, uh, pretty uh, positive about their dominance in the AI space. So they're not getting a big hit from this news. All right. Yeah. Intel a little bit more sensitive. AMD still though down two and a half percent. Uh, but yeah, Intel definitely a little bit more sensitive to these changes. Uh, okay, Jeff, two analyst notes I want to get to uh, as uh, look at McDonald's down one and a half percent right now. Uh, it's been coming off the highs pretty uh, steadily here. Now there's a straight downgrade from Argus. What are they saying? Yeah, they're moving them to hold from buy. They said the company's sales have been hurt recently as more customers are choosing meals at home over dining out because of food price inflation, uh, even though that's been moderating. Uh, they said the cost of dining out continues to rise. Argus did add that McDonald's uh, geographically is diverse. They have diverse locations, share buybacks, uh, dividend hikes, and they're all reasons for long-term investors to own the shares. Obviously, if we look at this uh, company, you know, up about 3% over the last 12 months, down about 5% year-to-date coming into today. Uh, you know, global comp sales rose 9% for 2023 uh, and increased 30% since 2019. Relatively good numbers there, but they've seen some weaker demand uh, as consumers have really just kind of pulled back a little bit. Customer traffic fell, fell in the last quarter. We know global same-store sales grew just 3.4%. That was more than percent below what analysts were expecting. And internationally, they've seen... Uh, a bit of a pullback in same store sales. Some of that has been, uh, you know, customers kind of boycotting boycotting the company. So some issues there. Forecast wise, uh, you know, they expect system wide sales to grow by nearly two percent in 2024. They're still, you know, banking by adding a lot of new locations, but uh, but there has been a concern over customer traffic going into this year. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, downgrade there. Uh, however, something positive. In Foot Locker, let's close it out there, uh, Jeff, is uh, shares are up 7% this morning. Uh, they got obliterated on their last earnings. Uh, does this analyst have some special information or something? <laughs> I think, uh, you know, similar to some of the analysts we've seen over the last couple of weeks, they may be looking at that pullback as an opportunity, especially some from uh, if they take into effect some of the things we've heard from the, the other names like Nike, which we know Foot Locker is dependent on, Evercore, upgraded Foot Locker to outperform. From in line, price target at thirty-two dollars, up from twenty-eight. They said uh, the management team, uh, you know, discussions last week were part of it. They also said their own channel checks across Europe and the U.S. Uh, show that uh, you know brands, especially like Nike, are suggesting the most significant investment behind uh, specialty athletic retail channels that they've seen in years. Um, obviously, that big pullback we, we saw was not good. We saw gross margins decline three and a half percent. We saw same store sales down 0.7 percent. Uh, they've had a, a tough time going, uh, and, and Nike 
you know, there's some optimism that Nike's kind of changing the way that they're doing business a little bit, which might actually help Foot Locker out. Uh, but there's still some question marks about whether or not that's really going to see uh, a big push, a uh, big positive push to the shares this year. Okay. All right. Uh, interesting. And a very, uh, uh, I guess, kind of an outlier commentary, uh, given uh, how rough this stock has been. But all right. I have been trying to turn around, so maybe the earnings are just a little bit of a step backwards. Thanks, Jeff Pierce, for taking us through the movers here this morning.